my friends, it's Ray from the Booze, Boops, and Blood podcast. It's been forever since I've seen you. <sighs> Do you know what my New Year's resolution was? Besides losing weight and doing all of those wonderful things, stop drinking, all that, you know, blah, 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 was to make more videos, make more reviews, be out there, you know, get this content out. There's so much content, it's that I gotta get it out. And, and to follow that, to do this, to actually live up to my resolution, I watched some fucking movies, guys. So, um, I watched a couple new horror movies, um, and I'm gonna talk about one of them today. This one is a low-budget, uh, British movie. Uh, or, <laughs> yeah, it's British, but they're t they're definitely on in Guernsey in this one, so like right off the French coast. But everybody in it was definitely British, British, Brit Brit from Britannia of some sort. Um, they're Britons of some sort, um, some such thing. Um, but this is another 2023 movie. Um, I'm looking to see the director is also the writer and he also he wrote this with his i'm assuming wife it doesn't say that it's his wife but i mean they wrote it together and she's in stars in it so i'm assuming um and his name is J lars jansen and her name is charlotte dawn potter she plays riley in this movie so to give you a little bit of backstory, we have I'm gonna give you I'm gonna read the synopsis from IMDB and FYI there's no trivia on this either because it's low budget. Um after a wild bachelorette party, a group of young women find themselves trapped in an underground bunker complex. A disturbing figure oops <laughs> a disturbing finding turns their night in an absolute nightmare. Turns their night in an absolute nightmare. I think there's a two missing there. Thanks, Summary. Will they be able to escape from this vast concrete maze? Synopsis. Doesn't look like we have any synopsis for this title yet. Well, I'm going to have to give you one. So, um, Ella, 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 Umbrella, is getting married to Abby, who we do not meet until the very end. Um, well, first we open with, um, I'm not going to go point by point. I'm just going to give you some plot, and then we're going to get in my blood, what I liked, what I didn't like. So, um, we open with this police officer, um, pretty much like talking to this group of reporters, meaning five extras, um, and, you know, cl all the reporters are, quote, clamoring to get the, you know, the, the scoop. <laughs> and, uh, what we learn are, there are, no, this, again, this makes no sense, because the end of the movie, I might spoil it, no, I'm not gonna spoil it, but... So he says that they they found girls. They found they found young women. Pretty sure he says young women, and he says that two of them have been. And this part is just it's like, uh, um, like regular on film. It's not like a because the rest of it is found footage. The the movie itself is found footage. This part is not. And he's saying like we found two women. We think, I think is what he says, and and that you know they're dehydrated. They've been gone for a long time, you know, um, and but they're stable in the hospital. And somebody says, "Weren't there like three more missing?" And he's like, "I'm not li liberty to say." Blah blah blah. He's like, "But like, how did this happen?" And he says, "You know, well, you know, they were all intoxicated." Blah blah blah. So we're like, "Okay, well, I'm guessing we're gonna get into their story." Uh, so we then um, turn to we switch over to this bachelorette party. Now we are in, um, uh, third person. What is final footage called? Is it in third person? Is that what it's called? I mean, like, uh, uh, is that third person? Uh, first person. <laughs> I might cut that. <laughs> um, so it's first person perspective at this point, and third person would be, yeah, the people on fucking film. God, I'm so fucking stupid tonight. So, um, it turns just to first person, and it's, uh, the, one of the main stars here is, uh, no one has an IMDb, IMDb picture, guys, so. There's, like, very few, so you can just still know what's, I mean, it's fine, like, it's fine. Is, I'm trying to remember all their names. Claire is the one who's starting to film this whole thing, and I think she's the one who set it all up. We, again, not a lot of, uh, but we find out that they've all come back to Guernsey, I think, to have this, I don't know. I guess they come, have come to Guernsey, or they're going to Guernsey to have this bachelorette party. Because I think that's where Ella lives now, I think. 
Um, and so they, you know, Ella and Claire meet up with Jessica, who's a singer. Then they go to get uh, Ziggy, then go pick up Riley. And then they go to this hotel room and they're getting all hammered. And they're in. Claire pulls out these costumes and I had to write them down because I was like, okay, I think I know what all these... I mean, some of them I was definitely knew who they were, but like uh, one gets the costume of, I'm assuming is Dawn from the office, from the British office. The Pam character, but it's Dawn in the British one. A frog, Gordon Ramsay, a bear, and Dwayne the Rock Johnson in that picture of him with that fanny pack very specific. I kind of liked it. I was like, I was feeling it. I was like, that's kind of funny. I enjoyed that. Um, and they go off to this pub, you know, it's, it's a bachelorette party. So they go into a pub, they get fucking hammered to some like fave bath fuse music. <laughs> it was like that and like royalty free dance music, but it was definitely like someone likes DMB, but they can never, would never be able to afford DMB, but like, no one knows how to dance to Dave Matthews. It was interesting. So, I mean, it's definitely somebody's basement or, like, covered back patio. Like, it was definitely, I mean, we're talking very low budget. And they are obnoxiously drunk. Like, they're those ones that you see, you're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I used to, okay, side note, I used to work at a winery, and I, my boss, he had an, he was from uh, from uh, Costa Rica and he had an accent. So he would, and the only reason I'm bringing that because I'm going to do an accent and you're going to be like, why the fuck did she do an accent? And we'd see these party buses of the bachelorettes pull in. He'd be like, God damn it, fucking bachelorette party. Like, and he'd be like, God damn it. And so it was always, we'd always be like, God damn it. Because we knew they were going to be obnoxious and just, oh, the whole night. And like someone was probably going to puke and one of us would have to probably fucking clean it up. So, pu public service announcement, don't be a dick. How about that? How about, don't be a dick um, for your bachelorette party. Shock in the dark, okay? D don't treat servers like assholes, all right? Don't treat your taxi driver like a dick. And that's the moral of this fucking story because they get picked up and they're all like obnoxiously drunk. Like I would have not, dr I would have left them on the side of the road way before this guy does because the one pukes all inside his taxi and he's like, no, thank you. You are done. And so he leaves them to pretty much walk home and like none of them feel bad. Like one of them left, like she ends up throwing up it in a wig, leaves the wig in the car. I'm like, you guys are not, you're supposed, this is the time where you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to be making me feel empathy for you or to be like definitely sympathy or, to, but definitely feel for you. And like, cause I've been in that spot where I'm like been so drunk, but I'm not feeling anything, but real like white hot anger at you right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, good on them for nobody driving, but also at the same time, it's like, maybe, maybe, maybe dry up a little bit before getting in a taxi and don't be fucking obnoxious. So they, um, they're left on the side of the road and they're walking home. They're going to walk. They're going to try to walk somewhere. At least they, there's some, maybe phone or something like that, or not a phone, but like there's some place they can, you know, maybe get another, another taxi or they're maybe they're hoping they're close enough. They can just walk back to their hotel. They come across this tunnel. And I have not heard of this, but it's fascinating to me. And I'm kind of interested to know more about this. But I guess, um, so Guernsey, I looked it up. It's off the, uh, it's off of um, the shore of France. So it's between England and France in the channel. Um, <laughs> channel. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of like, from what I understand, occupied by the Nazis during World War II. They pretty much used slave French labor, so they took French people and used them as slaves to dig these tunnels over in Guernsey. And they're like bombs, like they're 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 made to withstand bombs. Um, so what had happened, we will learn in this movie, was there was a horrible uh, cave-in, and fifty thousand people. It's like something horrible. A lot of people, French people in particular, died. Um, so, you know, they've, they've cleaned up the tunnels, obviously, since then. And there's a number of different tunnels like that over there. But, um, they said that this in particular, this one, like, um, they have it set up like a museum up the front. So the first part of it, they, you know, you can't go too far back into the tunnels, because I would assume they're still not, they're not safe. Uh, but 
So they start talking about that a little bit. And I guess you go knock on the door. Uh, and if something you wait, you know, urban legends, then you wait, something will, if, you know, something will knock back. And so they knock and they walk away and something knocks back. But they're all like, fuck that. And they continue walking. I'm just getting you to where we're going to take a break, where I'm going to cut it off. So they keep walking. Ziggy somehow gets lost or goes up ahead, falls down a, like a shaft and breaks her leg pretty badly. So they are like, okay, well, we'll climb down and then try to get out of the tunnel, go to that door that we just knocked on and get out. So you know where this is heading. Um, that one, uh, uh, Jess stays with Ziggy and the rest of the girls all head up to the, and also in the dark. So this is about the time you ask me, hey, Ray, how do they keep the light source? Well, because they still have that camera because they're still documenting the whole night. And because she's going to give this to Ella as her wedding present. Mm, that's my sus. Mm, that's a pretty cheap. <laughs> but I mean, fine. Fine. Maybe she wanted that. I don't know. Um, they weren't registered anywhere. Okay. It's fine. Well, well, um, anyhow, um, so they are, they've got the camera and they're using that as light and also their phones. Uh, the, the flashlight on their phones and they're trying to head up towards the end of the tunnel so they can at least get, you know, maybe get out that way. Um, they get up there. They actually start to the point where they get up to the museum part and that's when the lights come on. So they're in the dark up through that whole thing. You know, one sees something in the dark. There's not a lot happens until they get to the museum part. And when they get there, yeah, I really thought that part was that interesting. Like, um, at one point, they're all locked in. There's no way they're getting out. There's, like, dead bolted. There's, they're not getting out. Um, one of the display, display cases has an old World War II phone in it. And, like, the, um, the field phones. Um, and it starts to ring. And they're like, fuck, we, we need to get it out. I mean, like this, and one girl, I think it's Riley, goes, I don't fucking care. I might break it because it's a working phone. Because at this point, they're underground, so their phones aren't working. Like, they can use it as a flashlight, but there's no service. So, a lot of other shit happens. And I think that's where I'm going to end it. Spoiler alert, those girls are not the girls they were talking about at the beginning of the movie. Okay, um, alright, so some things I liked about the movie and some things I didn't. Well, at least I do a compliment sandwich um, when it comes to these things. Because I don't want to go point by point because, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, probably don't watch it, but you can make that up your decision up yourself. It, it is free. It's, I believe I watched it on Tubi, so it's free. Go for it. Um, I think that's where I watched it. Maybe not. I know I didn't pay for it, so it's free somewhere. Um, isn't everything on Tubi anymore, anyhow? What? Um... So, I would say, so, things I did like about it. Um, again, if you're new to this to me and to the podcast, you'll notice that my filler word is so. Um, what thing I did like about it, it was the, the novelty of it. I thought I was like, I've not seen this before. No, I have seen another movie where I believe it is a another, it's an Australian movie, and I cannot remember the name of it right now. It's going to freaking kill me. It's another one where they're going, like, down in a tunnel. But it's, uh, it's a just, they're... <laughs> Is it a tunnel or is it, uh, uh, it used to be a subway tunnel, I think. Subway system, I think in that one. I'm trying to remember what the name of it, but I really like that one too. But this one's a little different because you have the Nazi angle and, um, that, that, you know, and World War II sort of, and I think it's fascinating because we always focus on America, like, uh, because I'm American, we always focus on the Americans in World War II. We don't think, we don't think, like, I always, I really like Dunkirk because we got to see the British side of, uh, of World War II and what the civilians there were going through and what they did. And this is sort of like, so I always thought that I think that sort of aspect of the war, of World War II is very interesting, um, is European and British uh, sides of the war. Um, because they were going through it a lot longer than we were. Um, and uh, so I like that aspect of it. I like the camaraderie between the girls. Uh, none of them, once they start to sober up, once they're in the tunnels, and then even before then, they all have their own separate like personalities, and they're easy to like 
Um, and what I really enjoyed about them, I think the acting was great. I don't know how much of it was improv. I think a lot of it was probably improv. Um, it was just like, hey, girl, and who knows? I don't know if these girls are all friends in real life. They could possibly be. I'm not sure. But And that could be why there's no pictures, because maybe this is like their first, first gig or something. I don't know. Um, but... I thought that they were, I, I thought they got along really well. I thought their banter was really great between the, the, them. And then when they do start, they're, of course, just like any sort of like you're, you're confined in a space, you have to have a fight, a third act breakup, if you will. Um, and their third act breakup was great. I thought it was very, like, well done. I think he, there's a, a sufficient amount of tension that felt genuine. Uh, so uh, kudos to the acting. Um, I thought there was atmosphere was great. I think being in these tunnels and the lights constantly going out and then coming back on was great. I think that was, that really worked. Um, and it was just dark enough that you can see, okay, and this is what I love about found footage. Now, Ween hates found footage, but I love it because I'm always waiting. I'm waiting to see something jump out at me or to see something in the background and catch it. So I know I, I think she finds it boring. I'm not sure. Or it, it, it also it's the camera thing too with her. Uh, she but a lot of these n new ones with uh, new found footage movies because they're they know that they don't want you to be vomiting by the end of it. They're trying to make it not as like like Blair Witch but compare something like Hell House LLC to Blair Witch and how like fuck the cameras all over the fucking place. Like yeah. So I mean today it's more like hey steady cam, hey hey what's up steady cam. Um, I like that they took a chance. I don't necessarily think it worked all the way, but I think I like that they took a chance with it. I like that there's certain ways this story goes that I'm like, okay, well, I see. I see what you're doing. I like it. It's something different. And I think there's the, my, my last point here. For, or, you know what? I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to hold off because I have to end on a high note. Okay, buckle up, guys. So what I didn't like about this movie... Oh, this movie's all over the place. Um, certain people, characters start seeing things. They start getting, like, suddenly, like, they're transported to a different dimension almost because now they're seeing Nazis and Nazis shooting at them and... But suddenly they're back in the real time, and at one point they introduce like time stop standing still, like the stoppage of time, like if you were alien, like abducted by aliens, and then there's demon stuff going on. But I mean, and part of that I, I chalk up to because Nazis were obsessed with the occult, but still you gotta lead us there. Like I know that, but how many other people are going to know that? Like. I love Constantine, so that's one of the reasons I know about <laughs> like history. But at the same time, it's like the not a lot of people know that dogs are playing with toys. Um, not a lot of people know that, so that's why they're like, you gotta give them something. You gotta lead them to there. They're not gonna understand. Oh, this is why is this pentagram here? Oh, because there's a tie to the Nazis. <clears throat> you gotta give me something. A lot of just sitting around with my thumb, twiddling my thumbs. I kept looking at the time on this one. I'm like, oh my god, do something. Like, it, yeah, it's slow. It's real fucking slow. Like, and it's a lot of run and it gets dark. Then run another place and gets dark. And then run and then see a spooky person and then run. And we're supposed to infer a lot that we are not given. We're supposed to infer that there's a couple different figures that some of these characters see throughout the, it, that like, one is supposed to be like one of the French people who was, you know, who died in, in the tunnels. You got to give me more than him just cracking all of his bones and, and speaking and it just says in my subtitles, foreign language, it's French, I'm assuming, but, and you know, and the whole thing with the, like, there's, how they get out is kind of dumb. So, uh, it's, it's a lot of, I never thought there'd be a fetch quest in the middle of a horror movie about Nazis. But there sort of kind of is. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's not a lot here. It's, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and especially how you start it is n not how you end it. Um, all right, let's go back down to something I did like. So I'm going to go back to and say, I, 
I would I enjoy this for something different. I saw, you know, what it was about. Again, you can sell me on fucking found footage any goddamn day. I will watch it because I need help. Um, but it's something fucking different, which I think is something to like thumbs up on that one because it's like, again, I keep going back to Night Swim. Who the fuck asked for that? Like another PG thirteen bullshit horror movie about somebody in a spooky pool. Cool. What is this fucking unsolved mysteries? Um, so I'm gonna say, like, yeah, you, you, and you've got all the elements. I think just something different. I think, like, if you, you have spooky tunnel, Nazis, cave, you know, cave in, dead French people, bachelorette party. I mean, it just, that one doesn't so much work, but you can do something with that and make it really work. And I, it was the pieces were all there. I gave you all the police, the pieces, Mr. Policeman. But like, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't cohesive. So, it, it was, it was there. It was getting there. It's moving closer. I think maybe like another draft of it, or <sighs> this in a different iteration would be solid. All right. Would I recommend it? I'd say f- sure. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna pee your pants. <laughs> You're not going to be, like, so scared. It's not the scariest movie on the planet. But uh, if you want something to put on the background, sure. Sure. I mean, you could do worse. You know, you could be Black Christmas 2019. <laughs> um, Exorcist 2. <laughs> um, so, ratings. How we rate things, these things. It's um, So, first is Blood and Gore. Uh, this is one and a half. Uh, f- no, I gave them one, one and a half. And those- no, I gave it two and a half. One, one, one. Let's no. You know what? Let's stick with one, because really the only thing gross that we see is um, uh, blood on one girl's forehead and blood on the other one's legs. So no, one. We're good. Uh, spooky, scary. One. This is not scary. You know what the scariest part, honestly, of it is when they knock on the door and they walk away and the, the and it knocks again. Do something with that, because that was creepy. Um, uh, let's see. Um, sex and nudity, there is none. Um, then lastly, uh, fun entertainment, a oh, one. I did not have fun with this. It was another, a lot of checking your time. Check the time, check the time, check the time. I mean, I would say it's a more well-constructed um, movie than uh, then the other one I reviewed, um, I cannot think of the name of it right now, w- from the 1940s, where it was out in the middle of the... Oh, God, can't think of it right now. Which was so bad. So bad. Um, this one, like... The seeds are here to make a really good movie. So. Um, and that's that. So, um, if you have... If you don't know us, uh, we're the Booze, Booze, and Blood... Uh, podcast. We have a bi-weekly show uh, where we release, we usually have a themed month. Right now, because we've decided for the new year, we are going to move through um, his entire oeuvre of horror and suspense movies. It's Hitchcock month. So we're starting out January with Hitchcock month. We're starting with the silent films. Now, we're only going to do uh, months uh, of Hitchcock. We're going to move through them um, but it's not going to be consecutive months. We'll just, if we have, if we don't have programming, we will have a Hitchcock month. So January we have no programming. So it will be The Lodger and Blackmail at first. Um, and I cannot remember the other two, so you have to come back and stick around and watch it and listen for those. Uh, you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Stitcher, the Purple uh, Apple, I- literally any place you can listen to a podcast. We are there. Amazon, Audible, wherever. Um, and um, yeah, so my again, my news resolution is to watch more review or watch more movies and give reviews. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so stick around; we'll have some more. Um, we there's a lot of movies coming out. Um, we do there's a couple series and you know interviews of vampires for the second season will be coming out. So hoping to get back into watching those too. So until then, keep it spooky. <laughs>